All right, so we continue to look at EVs and kind of the evolution of where the space is moving. Uh, you know, one of the big factors is always going to be China in this discussion. Many of the makers over there, whether you're looking at NEO, BYD, Xpeng, any of those who are really kind of moved into, I would say somewhat of the limelight, you know, at least in the world stage. So today we're gonna to dive into it a little bit deeper in where this may, may be taking uh, the electric vehicle adoption phase with Alex Guberman from e for electric Welcome to TechPath here. Great to have you back, man. Thanks, it's great to be back, Paul. How are you? Uh, doing great, doing great. Um, you know, TechPath, for all you guys, we get a chance to jump into a lot of, of tech-oriented, very forward-leaning technology. Alex, of course, he is the host of E for Electric, who is really dedicated at, obviously, electric vehicles and uh, kind of the evolution of where that industry and technology is going. So with, you know, with your expertise, Alex, I want to go right to China. And we've covered BYD, we've covered Xpeng, NEO, you know, the likes uh, that are really kind of the, the forward-facing brands in China. But I want to reference uh, Xpeng and what they've done with their recent announcement of their $25,000 vehicle um, and what your thoughts on this particular car is. Yeah, so first of all, you know, full disclosure, Xpong Motors is one of my channel sponsors. So I just want to be transparent about that. Sure. Um, and uh, the only Xpong Motors car I've actually seen and driven in person is P7. This is, this yeah. is the newer version, uh, a cheaper version. Um, you know, these guys, uh, and this is one of the reasons I, I, I actually have a good relationship with them, you know, th they've done a pretty decent job about uh, not just going with one car or two. They're really expanding into, you know, a real brand with different models that appeal to different parts of the Chinese audience, right? Right now, they're mainly mm -hmm. in China. They just started to export uh, G3 cars into Norway. That We'll see how that goes. But, you know, and, and this, you know, this is a pretty uh, versatile car in terms of, you know, it has different types of range and pricing and stuff like that. Um, it is priced, you know, at a very, very low price there, especially mm -hmm. if you convert to the U.S. dollars. And, you know, it's just going for a different type of a market. I, I think from the very beginning, uh, the biggest issue that people had with electric cars is that, you know, they were quite expensive even after the incentives. You know whether it's the federal one here at seventy five hundred dollars or or European incentives, but look, you know, just like with any technology, prices are coming down, and you're able to get a cheaper version. This is not the top of the line car, right? You should you right. should not think of a twenty five thousand dollar car. You know, when when Tesla comes up with 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 theirs, it's not going to be an amazing electric car. It will be a budget electric car, which sure. we all need. Um, so you know, good for them. Uh, you know, the, their sales have been very good, just like all sales of electric cars uh, in, in, in this year so far, very impressive. So kudos to them. I mean, listen, I, I always said this, the more competition, the better. Even the most hardcore Tesla fans should cheer every electric car that comes on the market because the more competition Tesla has, the better their cars are going to be in the future, uh, even though they're just going to stick with Tesla. So I think everybody should praise things like this. Yeah, when you look at China and kind of the uh, the market, you know, landscape there, obviously they've got the high-end luxury vehicles that go tremendously well in China. But there's also, much like here in the U.S., it has a very similar consumer appetite around, yes, I need an entry-level vehicle, the mid-level, obviously we've shown that in the EV space with the Model 3 and the Model Y sales just being, you know, astronomical and, and great performance. But it has similar... Uh, scenarios with that in China. The difference when ch in China, of course, is you've got a lot of key players that are stepping into there. I mean, here in the U.S., we really only have one true electric vehicle that we can get access to, and that's the Tesla. Uh, obviously, Ford has a little bit of that, but you're only talking about 12,000 Mach-E's year to date that are out there. Chevy Bolt, okay, sure. You know, pickup-wise, we're limited to almost zero. But in China, you've got NEO, BYD, Xpeng, and then all the other entrants, including their top seller, which essentially outsells the Model 3. All different companies, all in the same landscape. Do you feel like when you look at where China's movement has been over the past year, have they just kind of really accelerated uh, the tech, or has it been just the scenario of consumers just wanting EVs? Where do you see that space going? 
it's 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 mainly the third one it's the government uh, and you know of course it's easier in 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 china as as the way their government is structured obviously to to essentially uh, mandate that manufacturers have to make a certain amount of electric cars every year and that you know it rises every every year uh they've created a very very friendly environment for manufacturers uh to and they, they're, they're essential let's be, let's be real they're, they're forcing a lot of manufacturers yeah. into making and selling electric cars um I'm, i mean I, I gotta say great for them sad for us i mean we're kind of behind here in the united states europe's kind of in the middle right um and it, it, you know I, you know by the way you know you name a bunch of companies they have so many other companies making mm -hmm. electric cars and a lot of them companies that we know for example nissan Mm -hmm. had an electric pickup truck in China for like two or three years already. I did a story on it a while back, but the truth is, is, is because it's required there and Nissan decided, okay, we'll make it, but just for China. There's so many cars, the electric cars that are being made just for China, or at least they launch in China because that's where it makes most sense for them. So it's great that, that you know, China is, 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 is a kind of almost leading I, yeah. I hate to say it, but they are leading the adoption and and uh, the the friendly environment for electric vehicles. But, you know, I'm jealous. I kind of want it here in the United States. And I'm sure people in Europe can probably um, also step it up as well. But it is what it is right now. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that's the kind of the scenario that we face right now. If we can start to see this happen, it, you know, it's the FOMO aspect around some countries that they finally get things going. Obviously, we have an infrastructure plan moving in place that I think will help that. I want to jump to, back to Xpong because this is, when I was talking about the variations of comp, of cars and companies, when you look at this $25,000 vehicle, I'm going to jump to these specs, uh, 460 kilometers on their entry. They're, I mean, this is pretty impressive all the way up to a 600 kilometer vehicle on the 600P on these ranges. We can't read anything there, obviously, in China or, or in Chinese, but the idea is that there's a lot of different trim levels that are available here on this vehicle. Much, And this is much different approach than what most electric vehicles makers have done. Now, we haven't seen enough yet from Ford to understand if they're going to do that with the Lightning. I know there's speculation that we'll see a lot of trim levels. Do you feel like the trim level approach is the right way to go? Because with the Y, it's you got two, you know? <laughs> You know, so it's hard to talk about the market. Like I've only been in China once and, uh, you know, the market there is very, very different, right? So for example, uh, you know, if we're talking about even self-driving technology, very mm -hmm. important part of self-driving technology is there for the cars to be able to go through tunnels because there's tons and tons of tunnels there, right? But a lot of this uh, self-driving tech that's developed in Europe or in the United States doesn't really account for that because we don't have too many of those. But, yep. but the Chinese-based manufacturers definitely make sure that theirs is much better. Uh, same thing with charging, right? They have a whole different thing going on. Most of China lives in apartment complexes with pretty much no uh, infrastructure in them. So that's why, for example, technology like battery swap makes more sense there. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say what consumers really are like in the country. We don't really know that much uh, yeah. on, on the level of consumers. Now, listen. Uh, choices can be good choice choices can be bad right like uh you know sometimes you go to a, a diner and there's 10 pages of choices you spend half an hour figuring out you know what kind of omelet you're going to get and then you go to in and out and it, the Boom. decision yeah. is absolutely <laughs> quick right which I, i'm sure there are just like there are trims in this car i'm sure there are just as many categories of, of consumers there uh my bigger concern with this of course would be the manufacturing xpong motors is still a relatively small manufacturer there right um the more trim levels you have the more different scenarios you have you know the more you have to maintain the more the more you have to uh, even advertise and explain the differences you know I, I don't know. I, maybe they overdid it a little bit, but I probably would never, as a consumer, because I'm I'm on the consumer side, mm -hmm. I would never complain about too many choices. So to me, sure, I'm I'm for it. <laughs> I like it with the fact that you've got well, the fact that this is going out to six dollar kilometers, uh, that in itself is really kind of placing its it that particular vehicle in a pretty good hot zone in terms of overall. Uh, potential there in terms of uh, competition, for sure. BYD had a recent 
uh, news on their June sales. I wanted to just jump to this. You can kind of see they've really kind of exploded in terms of their uh, their sales. Again, also lining up with um, really kind of the evolution of where the Chinese market is going. How far do you think the Chinese market is going to explode in terms of adoption? You think this is just going to continue? We're not going to see anything really change in the near future, just a lot of growth? Yeah, so BYD actually another interesting company because they were the electric manufacturing leader in the world before Tesla kind of caught up and overtook them, right? Uh, they mm -hmm. they only make cars mainly for China. They make buses here in the in the United States, actually down here in, in California. Um, you know, they're definitely one of the biggest uh, auto manufacturers for electric cars. There, they also manufacture batteries, which is actually pretty right. pretty big strength there. Um, now, uh, kudos on great sales, uh, but I also want to mention that pretty much across the board, electric car sales sure. have exploded this year, uh, from Tesla to BYD and everything in between. You know, Ford and Volkswagen and Porsche—they've all reported really, really good sales, which warms my heart. You know, uh, I might have to actually have my own cooling system for my hobby because it is it is it is enjoying this year so much. Um, so um, listen, how far are they going to go with this? You know what? As far as the world will let them Allow. in terms of, <laughs> you know, as long as long as we're not even attempting to compete with them in terms of the um, the incentives and infrastructure and overall um, notion that we need this, as long as we're doing that unfortunately as 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 long as we're slowing ourselves down they're gonna you know in china it's very easy they have plans they have a 2025 plan right now where they want to be the world leader in technology uh in-house development and you know what they're executing yeah i don't know what our plan is right and it's i mean listen it's also about the government structure their plan is going to be there for a long time because it's going to be the same government with the same policy you know, in countries like the United States and most European countries, you know, our government changes. Like, look at the contrast between our administrations in terms of their policy on green energy and, and electric sure. cars. You know, in another three years, a different president can come in and reverse things or maybe speed things up. So I, it's hard to predict. But right now we're losing. I <laughs> hope we do something about it. Yeah. So, OK, so just to kind of uh, surmise here is. You've got uh, a very big appetite from the consumer side. Tesla already has identified China as really their kingpin market for success. You've got a big, a big crop of players, even though not large manufacturers for most of them outside of a handful. And you have this move into really stretching the envelope in terms of new innovation around price point. Now, Model 3 does a very good job in sales there, meaning the Tesla Model 3 does a very good job in sales. In China, is there any threat to Tesla, do you feel, in the coming, say, next two years, 22 and 3, which is really where uh, Shanghai is going to be, you know, putting the hammer down in terms of, from what I understand, output there at the Gigafactory. Any threat for Tesla to really go head to head with the Chinese automakers? What do you mean by threat, right? Well, in um, essence of control of the market share. I mean, listen, just like, you know, I always give an example of an iPhone and Android, right? When iPhone came on the market, they flooded the market because it was amazing and it right. had and it was no competition. Same thing happened with Tesla. They came on the market 2012. They're amazing. There was no competition. But, you know, there are Androids now that are knocking on their door and that's that's market for you, right? Of course, they're going to be losing market share, but their market share is going to go from gigantic to just large, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And I, I don't see them, and I know people say, well, you know, they sell every car they make. Every manufacturer sells every car they make, but 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 so that's just not gonna be a problem. They will continue selling every car they make at good profit margin. And I don't, I don't, could, I, I if anything, I, I don't think it's a threat. I think it's the uh, validation Mm -hmm. that what Tesla has done and essentially uh, 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 dragged everybody into this and showed the way. So Perfect. I think it's a validation for them. They're not going to lose money over it. They'll, they'll, they'll lose an a re incredibly amazing market share. But I feel that, that that's expected. Yeah, yeah, for sure.